Welcome everyone to Talk Wrestling here on NoDQ.com's official YouTube channel and of course NoDQ.com. I am joined today by the uh, the panel of experts here on NoDQ.com, if so you called. will. Well, I, I consider myself an expert in the world of professional wrestling. Of course sports you do. How about you? Of course, of course you do, I do. Yeah. You know why? Because I'm Jeff fucking Meech, and that's why. I love that shirt, by the way. I do too, Aaron. Where can where where can we buy one of these shirts? ProWrestlingTees.com. Do a search for No DQ or check out the link in the description box. Because it's always there. Because Aaron knows how to plug this stuff. Because he's the man. That's an awesome shirt. I love it. it, it yeah. It, it, somebody it, it, needs to send me their extra L or double XL, triple XL shirts that uh, you know they don't wear no more. Well, I'm a charity I'm gonna reveal, case. I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal the trade secret to everybody right now up front because that's just the way I do my show. I had a series of shirts made here locally in town by another guy that wasn't Pro Wrestling Tees. Pro Wrestling Tees saw the interest and went, ooh, let's do that. Yeah, I got to say, that is a very groovy shirt. But the only thing groovier than that shirt is your background, Jeff. I love that background. The background is strictly for David's current state of mind. That's exactly why I put it up, just to see how it would mess with him. Very it's nice. tranquil. It's very, very tranquil. You know, I, I figured... I figured we, we, we talked last night, and we and Dave said he would love to be on Talk Rest, and I figured, you know what? Let's just bring both of you guys on and give you guys the same treatment that I get from these crazy people that watch me every week, and just feed you guys the same questions, and we'll do and we'll do a panel answer. Sounds good, and I'm here just for the ride because you have no idea what you're doing when it comes to Skype and production. I barely know what I'm doing. We've had to restart this a couple of times because this of is take problems. three, kids, yeah. and if third time isn't the charm, then. I, then then Ginger Rage will be in effect. Yes, yeah, so now I know what it's like to work for ESPN. Yeah, hopefully oh. the quality's <laughs> decent here. I mean, I feel like I spent all this money on a Mac and I'm still having all these problems. So maybe PC's not really that much worse than a Mac. Well, you know, we all can't have retail job, you know, luxuries and be able to afford all kinds of ridiculous equipment and be able to, you know, do stuff like that. So yeah, it is what it is. It is what it so, is. All right, well, let's get this party started, Jeff. Let's do. All right. First question comes from Mark O'Connell. His his Twitter handle is at Gary Copeland fan. Who Gary Copeland is, I have no idea. But probably a he, he wants to know or something. I don't know. That's something. I'll, I'll have to research it and let, let let you guys know next week. What are your thoughts on the current proposed WrestleMania card? I'm assuming he's talking about the post that you made on, or I, I'm assuming Steve made that post on the website. Aaron, yeah. I didn't see you actually posted that, but um, he's talking about the card that was you know, put out there for the role to know about. And he says, I think it's underwhelming to say the least. We kind of, we kind of touched on this during the chamber predictions Yeah, and said that it is very underwhelming, but you know, uh, let me, let me throw to you first, Aaron, because you're, you're, you're the one that, you know, broke, you know, broke the news on your own website or Steve did. What do you think of what we're looking at? If the WrestleMania card comes to fruition? I think it's fine. I've talked about this on my videos. I think that when it's all said and done, WrestleMania will be a good show. If anything, drags WrestleMania down, it will be the fact that it's a seven-hour show. I think that that will be the biggest factor in that show not living up to expectations. I think that <clears throat> Seth Rollins and Triple H, that's a match that they put a lot of stock into, and if it goes through, it does happen. I think it will be a good match. I think that Goldberg and Lesnar, that is what it is. It's a drawing card. It, it's a match yeah. that is going to get a lot of mainstream attention. So it is what it is. I think that the card... Could be better. I mean, I think AJ Styles <clears throat> should have a high-profile match. Is Shane McMahon a worthy opponent for AJ? My opinion is Shane McMahon is a McMahon. He's positioned to be somebody important. And AJ facing Shane McMahon is a big deal, regardless of what people think. You have to keep in mind that Brock Lesnar was originally supposed to be Shane's opponent. WWE was planning Lesnar versus Shane. Shane McMahon is one of WWE's top superstars, even though some people roll their eyes at that. AJ Styles, I think, would, would deliver a memorable match with Shane McMahon. So overall, I think it's an okay card. I mean, what do you think, Jeff? This is your show. Well, well uh, let, me, let me go ahead and throw David first, and then I'll, I'll, throw my, I'll throw my two cents in at the end here. Yeah, well, I don't know what people are complaining about, because in comparison to last year's card, I mean, this, this is definitely going to be better. I mean, you got guys that weren't there last year um, that are going to be in it this year. I mean, John Cena wasn't there last year. But I agree with Aaron. AJ Styles needs to have a high-profile match. Now, that being said, I don't think Shane McMahon is necessarily a downgrade. 
if you look back at the King of the Ring, that was probably one of Kurt Angle's most memorable matches in his early year Definitely. was yep. against Shane McMahon. And, and you know, Shane, he'll go all out, man. He's not he's like one of the boys. He travels with the guys. He don't mind taking bumps. I think it could be entertaining. You know, would I've liked to see him going with the WWE championship? Sure. But it is what it is. And, you know, they're catering to the part timers again, all to, you know, gain, uh, you know, media interest. Yeah, yeah, I, I I totally agree with the Shane McMahon thing. Honestly, I think this is this could be Shane McMahon's tamest outing. When you think about it, he doesn't have to do a bunch of high spots. He doesn't have to do a bunch of you know diving off of cages or going through tables or whatever. He can have a wrestling match with the best guy on the roster. I still think mm-hmm. Shane will take the crazy risks. He, he will, but he doesn't have to this time. Is my point. He doesn't have to go completely batshit crazy like he's done against you know the Undertaker or against Kurt Angle or you know whoever. You know, or follow Titan Titantrons. It's, it's, it's but you know he that will. That, that's that's why Shane McMahon is who he is. He's willing to go out there and take all sorts of crazy but, risks. But I know what but, you're but saying. You know what? I know what you're saying because yeah, AJ I, can do all that stuff too, and AJ can really carry it. Yeah, and and the thing is, we all we for those of us, for those of you who didn't watch WrestleMania uh, WWE 24 WrestleMania Dallas, we all saw the McMahon family's reaction to Shane's hell in the cell outing. They were mortified. And I can't fathom a situation where Marissa or his parents would even think about letting him do something that crazy again at his age. Yeah, don't forget at the Survivor Series, he suffered a concussion, too, with a mistimed, you know, big spot that he was doing, jumping from one end to the other while getting speared. Wasn't Roman's fault as much as I would like to blame him. It's not his fault. You know, it was just a freak accident. He hit his head. And so you got to wonder, the guy that's getting up there in age who's not a full-time performer, you know, how how many more risks does he want to do? And I think for him, he's probably looking forward to wrestling AJ. AJ's been the best wrestler in the world now for the last, you know, few years at least. So I think he'll be great. If if your top guy is being forced to retire due to concussion problems, you don't put a part-timer there with concussions. You just don't do that. Right. So, all right. My my opinion overall on the card – it's not gonna like you said, Dave. Compared to last year's, it, it's it's apples and oranges. It's it, it's it's heaven and hell. It really is. It's it's completely 180 from what we were presented last year at this time. Now, Aaron makes a good point. If if the show if the show goes live on the network at two at whatever it is uh, five four, Eastern. Uh, f- five Eastern two out here on the West Coast. That is seven hours of programming. And Aaron and my son and I sat at Wade's house the entire freaking day last year. We were exhausted. And Aaron, Have a fun time. he is, is like, let's, all right, let's tape. And we're going, oh my God, I'm going to die. Right. <laughs> My poor son, God bless him. He's, you know, at the time he was, you know, whatever. He he had just turned eight years old, and he's a trooper. He's staying awake, and he's like, "Let's do this." I, I'm glad WrestleMania is at my house this year, because <laughs> <laughs> if it goes long, he's going to bed. Because luckily, he has spring break the next day. So it's not a big deal, but still, I think it'll be better this year if we get what we've been rumored to get. And even if it's tweaked, it still. It can't be as bad as Triple H and Roman Reigns and a 30-minute rock pyrotechnic segment. It just can't. Yeah. Oh, right. Good. But I got to ask you guys, I mean, does it is it more impactful? Like, you look at WrestleMania 31, and Aaron, you were there, right? Yeah. Yep. You only had, like, five matches or so on the card, and five or six, right? And all of them were very meaningful. Now, do you rather have something like that where you just have long matches and all of them significant? Or do you want to try, like, you see the early days where they cram 12, 13 matches in? You know, to me, like I, I, your son's got a higher attention span than me, Jeff, because well, I couldn't well, sit through no, that seven hours. The, the problem with <clears throat> cramming the matches, here's the deal. They were cramming 13 matches in four hours or three hours. Yeah. 13 matches in seven hours is not a big deal. That's that, that, that's, that's like that's like two matches an hour. That's nothing. Right. Right. That is more feasible, but like you said, at WrestleMania 31, when Aaron went to, you know, Santa, whatever the hell, Santa Clara, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, there, Santa Clara. Um, they, they had a limited amount of matches that they spread out, and they put a bunch, a bunch, and bunch of filler in. Oh, there, there was more than mm-hmm. five or six matches. So there, was, there was like eight or nine. It was still a pretty long card. You sure? The main yeah. card? 
Yeah, it was oh, still pretty okay. rough. You know, they they also had that that rock segment with Ronda Rousey and, and well, right, that was over Triple a half H hour stuff. alone. Yeah, that took up twenty minutes of time. So that there were some other segments besides matches, but it, it's still I think there was a good seven or eight matches. I, I seem to remember there being quite a few, but I don't know. I mean, I just I just think the shows are too long in general. I I know the idea behind making WrestleMania longer since it's their Super Bowl, but at the same time, I I think they're really pushing it too far with the the length of the shows. And the problem is now they're making the big four the same length. Yeah. It's just, so it's not, it, it, it's not a special yeah. thing. If it's many, for me, it's, it, it's it just, doesn't... it's just a, it's just an all day affair. I mean, I get up at six 30 in the morning, West coast time. I'm on the computer right at six 30. And literally on these kind of days, like WrestleMania, the only break I'll take the entire day is to eat. And between that, I'm on the computer the entire day for what, well, for one reason or another. What's so funny is the first Mania I ever went to, the one in Anaheim, where they have the Fatal 4-Way, they, they advertise that WrestleMania all day long thing. It literally is all day long now. Yeah. It really yeah, is. It all is. Right. Next question comes from uh, a very fun contributor, Matt Big. His uh, his handle is MattBig123. Would you guys say the 2016-17 Miz is better than the 2010 Miz? Yes. Yes. Aaron, Aaron, oh, absolutely. Okay. I think yeah. the Miz okay. is, is at the peak of his career, actually. I think he's really stepped it up, and he is one of those guys that just keeps getting better and better. And I have a lot of respect for the guy because you don't see that often. Sometimes you see a guy get good, and then he just is on a plateau, and he never really gets better. With the Miz, he has consistently been getting better since his debut. And, yeah, I would say he's <clears> even better than, than 2010. He's not being pushed as strong as he was back then, but... He's still one of the top guys on SmackDown, and he's been doing amazing work. I mean, I think The Miz, to put it in his own words, is awesome. Yeah, and he's really held down the upper mid-card for yeah. a while now, the last year or so. And, you know, he was a guy, not that he has to earn my respect, like, who am I? I'm just some peon. But I was critical of him for years because he didn't work the indie system. He, same thing as Roman Reigns, you know, reality TV guy. And I poo-pooed on him for a while. But now he's become that character that you love to hate. He's he's a great heel. You know, I don't ever see him going face anytime soon because what he does as a heel is perfect. He gets under people's skin and he does his job, you know. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's had some quality matches too. So, I, I definitely. I, I have noticed over the years that the, the nicest guys on the street make for the greatest heels. Uh, you know, pe pe people people criticize me when I do shows like this with you guys for being, you know, cocky and whatever. But I'm generally a nice guy. I was praised more than once for how much of a jackass heel manager I was when I worked for Epic War and Gary. Yeah. The same thing goes with Miz. He is he is sweet. He's a sweet pea. He really is. But he is the greatest antagonist they have on SmackDown right now. He's, He's one of the few guys and, that actually gets booed and, and gets the people to boo him. That's right. very true. Right. When he comes out, the people are cheering for him because he, he's, 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 he's charismatic. He's got the work ethic. He knows what he's doing there, and he's got a hot wife there with him. But as soon as he talks, he sucks him right back into the dark side, man. And it's so <laughs> – it, 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 it's, it's the true sign of a great worker and a great heel that he can do something like that. And you guys are both right. He has improved leaps and bounds. If he was WWE champion now, he could be one of the best of all time. Definitely. Is it smart for him to bring his wife, though? I want to ask you that, because has the business changed? Because back in the day, it was really a death sentence to bring your wife, because chances are you probably will lose her, right? So I don't um, know. I, I, I think having known Mike before he became Miz and you know knowing how he is now and how his relationship is with his wife, I think, I think he's one of the few people that can be secure in his relationship because he's a good guy. She's a good person. And I well, honestly good. don't, and I, I don't really think there's, you know, and, and to be, to be perfectly blunt, they're both good looking people. Right. And, they, and they work well. They have the chemistry together, not just off screen, but on screen as well. I mean, she's really added to his act and, and given it some longevity. Yeah, it, it's it, it's few and far between that a wife or a significant other adds rather than draws back from. Yeah, the, the the glaring exception, of course, is Randy and Elizabeth. They were the unbelievable it couple of wrestling. They oh were, yeah, they were wrestling's together. first couple. Absolutely, they, they really were. But you know, when, when you look at things, you know, like 
let's say like Missy Hyatt and Eddie Gilbert. Oh my God, cancerous for each other when they were together in the business, and look what happened to them. Eddie's gone, and Chris Missy's Candino gone. and Sonny. Don't even get me started. <laughs> oh my God, Chris. I love Chris and Tammy to pieces, but yeah. Um, may Chris rest in peace. Good grief. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, and, and you know, and and look what Sonny ended up telling us on that shoot video. What happened with her and Shawn Michaels? So you know, it's just you know. It's, it's it the, the business is very cancer for relationships i i've yeah i've i've noticed that and uh it, it um i've i found it few and far between that relationships that start in the business stay together in the business I so agree. Ms. Point. and maurice are Ms. and maurice are actually uh, a glaring exception i think yeah i agree mm-hmm. i think uh yeah there's a lot of a lot of issues with with being a couple in the in the wrestling business but Miz and Marie so far it, it seems like it's working out very well for them yeah well you know, oh yeah it's funny it it, it 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 even spreads to people on the fringe of the business is any one of the xmv guys still with their something other that they were over 10 years ago no well that's just like that's just that's just life in general we're all single and loving it so it's okay if anybody can actually um, get together and, and stay together that that's something to really brag about it, it really is, and I That's commend a testament. anybody. And I commend people like my parents who have been together, you know, like it's some, uh, over forty years, including dating this year. So you know, it's wow. Uh, yeah, it's it's not so, easy. It's not, and I commend people in the business that can make it work because it, it's the business is is shitty on everything. It really is. All right, enough en- enough depression. <laughs> Kyle Mitchell at KR Mitchell twenty four. What's the one thing? that would make WWE's 2017 successful and the one thing that would make it disastrous? I like this question. That's a good question. Boss man? I have to think about that one. I mean, the one thing that could make it disastrous would be obviously somebody dying under WWE's watch. You know, if if Kurt Angle came back and something happened to him, you know, that would be disastrous. As far as something that would, would be successful for WWE, I mean, having that next breakout star, having that next Stone Cold or Rock is what WWE would really need to be able to reach a whole new level of success that they haven't seen in a very long time. So those, those would be my choices. What do you think, David? Well, shy of somebody dying, I would say also because of the uh, the roster they have, there's so many people on the roster. I think they could risk painting themselves in a corner when it comes to booking. And you've got guys that are top stars, but they're getting up there in age. So there's only so much time to pull trigger on certain storylines and certain rivalries. And if they don't do that, then you book yourself in a corner and then the fans will just hijack shows, you know. So that's not a good thing. Um, but, you know, I think a good thing for them would um, – <laughs> Bring Kurt Angle back. Let him wrestle a program with somebody. Come on. Let him have a series of matches. Kurt Angle, baby. You Fans want to see it. David, you said the key phrase, and I, I'm so glad you said this because I want to bring this up with you guys here on camera with me because this really pissed me off when it happened. After the UK tournament, I was uber critical of the fans and the way they were literally hijacking the show. And I got to, oh, they're just chanting a lot. No, no, no. They were chanting to hear themselves chant. I they agree. weren't chanting anything special. They weren't chanting anything that had anything to do with what was going on in those 20 by 20. And That's I thought true. it was complete bull crap. And I thought it was lame of them. And, you know, I, I got a little bit of heat for comparing it to the uh, to the NXT crowd. The NXT crowd is nowhere near that bad. They have at least some semblance of respect for the competitors. I don't know. I've, the, I've heard they've, they've done some bad chants lately that, that really got under people's skin. Have they, I, I, you know, I, I haven't heard them on, I mean, maybe they ended out on TV. I don't know, but I heard them in the UK, man, and they were just obnoxious. Oh, I, I totally agree, Jeff. I would say, I, I'm sure some people will be upset with this comment. I think Portland had a better crowd than that UK crowd. I mean, Portland... The fans there were actually. You guys were hot in Portland. They were. Actually, I heard it. You guys were hot. They were actually invested in what was going on, and they were reacting to what was happening instead of trying to come up with all these clever chants and trying to be overly smart and that sort of thing. So they were just enjoying the show and and uh, and playing along with everything and going along with it. The same thing happened in the little bitty Rabobank Arena here in Bakersfield, or Theater, whatever the heck it's called up there. We literally had less 2,000 people in that place. And other than a few smattering, you know, lame asses or whatever, the people chanted. I mean, they sang Bobby's song. They sang Shinsuke's song. 
they they they, they did the, the the normal chance with the normal people involved in the NXT matches, but it wasn't like just. I swear to God, they were chanting, hearing themselves chant, and it really got on my. Face. Any crowd that does the "We Are Awesome" chant, I mean, I'm I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, yeah but mean, don't get me wrong though. The UK fans are great, and I really, really love the British style of wrestling. You know, it just happened to be at this show. They must have all gotten together on on social media and said, "We're just gonna do, we're gonna do this," and you know, and that's what happened. David's you know? trying to save face for all of us here. He is. And I, God, God bless you for it. Listen, I'm not knocking every single fan that resides no. in the UK because Lord knows I've got plenty of them on Twitter that will kick my ass. If exactly. Do. That's why we got to watch our P's and Q's here, Jeff. But but that crowd in that little whatever that little theater whatever was 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 just over the top obnoxious. And I, I, I had a real problem with it, and I had a real problem with getting heat for saying it. What about the ECW show? Remember the first one when they brought it back, the one night stand, and when Cena was in there, and they're like, you know, fuck them up, Van Dam, fuck them up, Cena, Swallows, you know, so, I mean, they were getting creative too. Well, that was just funny. It, th- th- that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Number one, number two, Mike and I were chanting right along with him here at the house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so trust classic. Me, it, yeah, it, Jeff. It, it, Jeff would be a hypocrite. Well, no, if things are working differently, I'd have been in the skybox with Rob's wife at that show. This it didn't work out yeah. that way. So I was perfectly fine sitting in Mike's living room, throwing beers back and chanting along with the crowd, whatever. <laughs> but the problem is, it's it, it's it's to the point where the the, the 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 ECW crowd purposely guzzled Cena, and pretty much only Cena. Yeah, that's true. The, 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 the UK crowd chanted on everybody it was just like oh, yeah it did the wrestlers a disservice too because i really yeah. thought there was some decent wrestling some really good wrestling you know so i mean yeah th- th- that's the thing i'm trying to convince my father to branch out away from raw and smackdown and watch the cruiserweight classic and watch you tournament but all the chanting just like he's like mm. <laughs> so it's not just it is all right enough ragging on the uk crowd i love you brits god bless you guys yeah, we love the UK. We do. We, 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 I, I get so many tweets from the UK. I have a, I have a, I have a guy, Ty Marshall UK is his Twitter handle. He's one of my favorite contributors to the show. I love that guy. He's awesome. Hi to my friends in Falkirk, Scotland. Oh, there you go. I got family in Scotland somewhere. I gotta look it up. All right, I got three questions from a regular contributor. His name is his name and Twitter handle are Mr. Yuck. M R U Y U K K is his name. First one says, everyone clamors about Angle versus Styles in WWE, but what about Angle versus Samoa Joe? The TNA bouts ruled. I agree. That would be an awesome match to see AJ Styles, or excuse me, Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle. I'd love to see it in a WWE ring. Will it happen? I mean, if Kurt Angle comes back and does more than one or two matches, I could definitely see that as a possibility. I mean, I think Joe would be at the top of the list of guys for Angle to face in a WWE ring. Yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm not sure about that, and I, I always say that because Joe's current booking situation—he's being booked as a complete destroyer. Do they really want to go out and destroy a Hall of Famer when he's just put in the Hall of Fame? Right. That's I think true. they would want Kurt Angle to work with somebody safe. Like you won't see Kurt against Brock. Are again, you saying? You know are I mean? you saying no Samoa Joe's not safe? Are you trying to imply that? No. Well, no. Wait a second. I'm not saying that. No, the accidents happen everywhere, Tyson kid. But uh, you know, I'm just saying that. If you see Samoa Joe, and plus, you know, think of who he's worked with already. Nakamura, who's another stiff worker. You know what I mean? Think when Ken Shamrock first got in the WWF. They had him work with Dan Severin. Well, first he worked with other people, and they said, dude, the guy's too stiff with me. So then they brought in Dan Severin, and they, all the big guys, you know, that worked with him, like Bradshaw and stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, there's some people that don't want to actually get hurt out there, you know? Yeah. So. I, heard, I heard Val Venus was pretty stiff. Boing, boing, boing. For Rift, <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's like and my yes, one good line and, of the year. And, and, and <laughs> yes, folks, that is what she said. Okay, um, do you? Uh, okay, well, actually, somebody, somebody already answered that question. So let's see. If Vince ever came back to TV for one last, you're fired. Who would you like to receive the pink slip? Donald Trump. Right on. Yeah, I said absolutely. that just. I said that just to to please you guys. But you well, know what? It's true. It's true because he already fired Donald once as, as the owner of Raw. Did he? He did. I thought, Remember, he I thought Donald Trump took... quit. No, well, well, well in, in Vince's role, he fired him. Because remember, he hey, I was... Donald Trump, you're fired. I, I doubt 
I doubt Trump would do anything that would make himself look that weak. So I think it was more like Vince fired him, but everyone could see clearly that Trump had quit. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to go back on the network. I, I don't remember it exactly, but I'd be surprised if, if Trump did anything that made himself look look that way. Well, yeah, Just I mean, like when was, I was at WrestleMania 23, I knew he wasn't going to get his head shaved. Well, yeah, you know, you think Donald Trump's going to shave his head, please? And he took like the worst yeah. stunner in history. He should be fired for that alone. That's right. Oh yeah. They should make Stone Cold Secretary of Defense and teach him how to take a stunner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just saying. All right, let's see. This one's from. Uh, Jeremiah Dorsett, kind of an easy question, but I'll go ahead and throw it in there. Do you think uh, TNA, Jeremiah? Jeremiah, do you think TNA has failed to replace AJ, Joe, Daniels, Cass, and others yes. like the original days? Completely. Yes. Why yeah. do you think they're on pop getting like point whatever it is ratings? If the hey, Hardys man. go, it's over for them. Yeah. I'm just saying. TNA will never die. TNA will last forever. They always find a way to stay in business and. I don't know. I mean, even if the Hardys left, I think TNA would somehow find a way to survive. Well, according to your report on the world-famous website, NoDQ.com, I read, Jeff Jarrett's back in power, so he won't have oh, the company die for sure. I like how people are saying, well, you know, fans are complaining about everything that TNA does. You know, I always said TNA needs some fresh blood. They need some new creative ideas and new concepts and new people coming in with a fresh set of eyes to try and do something different that we haven't seen before. I never said TNA should bring back Jeff Jarrett. I never said that. Well, I'm not going to no. say anything bad about Jarrett because I, I emailed him a few times, and I'm still hoping he'll hire me down the road, so I'm not going to say anything bad about Double J. I didn't say anything bad about Double J. I'm just pointing out the fact that he's back in creative control now, so we'll see what happens. You know, so what's GF up with Global Force then? Well, you know, with GFW, when they were starting up, I did email them and asked about covering their event for nodq.com and i never heard back from anybody oh. no we, we, we i heard back from jared i i, I he emailed said if, jared i emailed a bunch of people i never heard back from anybody oh you think they'd want the press you would think so i think jared didn't like the coverage we gave him when he didn't have a champion on that on extreme mayhem and buffed us as a result why there was nothing wrong with that i know it was just he he he, he totally kayfabe us remember yeah I don't know. I don't know what to deal with Jared. Well, he's old school, right? Jared. But I, I do agree. Okay, Fresh whoa. faces is what TNA needs. Well, as far as Jared being old school, we had Dusty on a pro the same damn match, and he went completely off script on us. So. Well, he went off script because you went off to play with kids, Jeff. That was before I went away from the conversation, smartass. That's not what I'm talking about. How could about. you leave the conversation with Dusty Rhodes? That's unbelievable. <laughs> I had a job. I had a job I had to get to. I'm sorry. Oh. I hope he understood that. He did. Unfortunately, my co-host didn't and made a career off that Dusty quote. Well, it was a blow to Dusty's ego that you were leaving to go play with kids instead of talking to the American dream, if you will. I talked to Dusty long after that. Everything was fine. It First of all, stop saying play with club. kids because it can get misconstrued, okay? Don't say play with kids in today's age. It's exactly what Dusty said. It was exact words. Play with the kids, if you will. It's exactly what he said. So, <laughs> But I will say only one person ever obsessed over that after that interview. So, anyway. Uh, Same person that obsesses. That's right. Let's see. Where are, where are we at here? Oh, okay. I, I can never pronounce this guy's name, so I'm sorry about this in advance. Uh, Jishnu. The... I just call him Jishnu. Jishnu. Well, we'll just do Jishnu. That works. Okay. What is the finishing point of the Ms. Daniel Bryan storyline? There is none. Exactly. Why are they doing it then? What is the point? Right. And that's Ms. what I said, Joe booking heat. himself into a corner. Yeah, it's to get Miss Heat. Exactly. That's all it is. Because you know Daniel Bryan won't be allowed to wrestle as much as we would love to see that. It's just but, not going to happen. But the thing is, that there's only so much heat he can garner from an invalid. He, he'll have to what? literally kick his damn... He, he'll have to kick Bryan's head off to really garner the Did heat. Did you just call Bryan an invalid? Can he wrestle in the ring anymore? Yes, he can. His WWE own doctor, won't allow his own him to. doctor said he could. Well, he, he he was he was convinced to retire, so it was his choice. Well, about as much of his choice as, as possible, you know. If, if if he really wanted to go work somewhere else, he would have gone to work somewhere else. Getting out, out of the contract isn't that easy, Jeff. What's that? Getting out of the contract isn't that easy. 
No, it's not that easy. And WWE doesn't allow their wrestlers to work as private contractors to other indies, it seems like. I think they would do more business if they, like back in the day when they would do interpromotional things with like, you know, uh, Memphis and stuff. You know, I think it would help WWE to allow their wrestlers to work the indies, but whatever. If Brian wanted to make a point, he would have sat the contract, got released, and then found work somewhere else. But sitting out, well, look at how that worked out for Cian Punk. Yeah, sitting out of the contract's counterproductive. You know, I think Brian would yeah. rather be doing something, anything rather than just sitting home. Right, at least I you're on screen, that, that, getting that, a that, paycheck. That, that, that that that's my point. He's still on screen. He's still getting a paycheck, and he's still happy to do it. So the fact that he was forced to retire is a crock of shit. Because if he was forced away, he'd be pissed about it and wouldn't come back. Well, I'm, I'm well sure. it's just like when a CEO gets sort of forced to retire of a company. You know, it's that sort of thing. You're coaxed into it. You know, I mean, believe me, he wants to wrestle. But it's, it's like I have you know. seen the Simpsons episode when the the uh, guy at the power plant was pretty much forced to retire by Mr. Burns. Do you yeah. remember that? Remember. That, that, that's pretty much how I see the Daniel Bryan thing. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to agree to disagree on that. It's my show, so I can say that. That's All right. True. Let's see. This one is from Brett Siebenhair, I guess I said. It's a question just for Aaron, though. Okay. Why does good old JM always sound drunk? Are you drunk, Jeff? I'm not right now. Well, I have no idea then. I would hope not at 9 in the morning. 9.30, but yeah. No, um, I, the, 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 I'm trying to think. The last time I was drunk on a No DQ broadcast. Trust me, if Jeff was drunk, he would be slurring his speech. He'd be talking about the Hall of Flame. Hall and of the Flame, yep. key And broom all that key, good yep. stuff. Absolutely. And then the he might have sunglasses drunk. on with a backwards hat, too. If he and was Jeff, drunk. Jeff is an angry drunk, too. Uh, oh, no. Always, but most of the time. Jeff um, is too nice the, right now to be drunk. This is very right. true. I, I, I'm a much better place than I was last time I drank on a NoDQ broadcast. Yeah. Trust me. Tr- yeah. Aaron knows exactly what broadcast I'm talking about that I was drunk on. I'm not going to mention it on air. But, you know, I don't it, even it, like it, drinking it was, that much. It, well, no, you know, it, 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 was it takes too long. Of, it was a series of tapings that went on throughout the day, and I just kept drinking. What? Okay, it's the XMV SummerSlam recaps with, with Mike and Jeff. Go back and watch it. It's on the NoDQ YouTube channel. Uh, by 2006, As we go, you guys. By 2006, just, Jeff is long gone, man. I am slurring. If shit, you want to see drunk bad. Jeff, watch that video. But well, Mike had to carry your ass. I think nobody could carry anybody at that point. No, no, it, 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 no, no, because because Mike was drinking too. Um, if you want to see somebody carrying drunk Jeff, talk wrestling the first HD episode because Noah Don is just. Baby feeds me right through that. Oh yeah, thing. that okay. Oh that my one god, was bad because I think you made like some sort of homophobic comment and you got a lot of heat for that. I think I did. It, it, it was literally the most embarrassing show I ever did. Yeah, it, it was talk a first wrestling episode. 2010, the first HD episode at at the SummerSlam, Bob's Big Boy, when you guys yep. were recapping the show. And the reason that happened, for those of you that haven't heard this story a hundred times on this show in particular by now, um, I went to SummerSlam, bought myself a cheap seat way up in the boonies somewhere, and I was lonely. And I put a tweet out saying, hey, guys, I'm in this section in this seat. Come up and say hi. And every single person that came to see my ass had a drink in their hand for good old JM. So by the time I started walking Aaron's car, Aaron had to basically carry me to the damn car to drive to Burbank. From LA, it was, and what's funny is I remember everything. That's that was quite the adventure. And the the, the really embarrassing part was when I got home, I literally staggered. It pays to get celebrities sometimes. I literally staggered through the door and passed out on my bed without even saying a word to anybody except. (laughs) What a day that was! But yeah, you guys could check that out. I I love how we're ragging on (laughs) Jeff on his own show. That's fine. That's why I brought you guys on. Give me, give, give me a little heat. I love it. This is yeah, the roast it. Jeff Meacham edition <laughs> of Talk Wrestling, folks. That's right. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's do one more. Eric Bamberger. That's an interesting last name. Are there I'm any right wrestling podcasts you guys listen to? Um, not really. I mean, I'm just focused for the most part doing my own thing. So, um, you know, really don't watch that much or listen to much. I, you know, it's weird. People say, why don't you do a podcast? Isn't that what we're doing? Videos can also be considered podcasts. I mean, to my well, knowledge. I, 
We, we get a lot I less know. criticism that way, though, because they're always commenting on our hair or our, that we're recording with a potato or the sound quality or this or that. If we just went to audio, maybe people wouldn't give a crap. That's true. <laughs> That's one less thing you have well, to worry about. Greg and I are going to do uh, Coast to Coast on audio format, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I... I don't watch my own stuff. People think I do. I really do. I once I record a show, I delete it off my phone and I never watch it again. The only show delete. I watch, I, delete. The only show I watch occasionally is XMV One Hundred because that was a whole special place in my heart because that was a really good show. I rewatch my own shows because I'm still. It's almost like when I was in a band, we would record our practices so that we listen to it to get better, and that's the only reason why I would watch over just to see if I could get better. Um, now, besides uh, you two, obviously, who I, I watch, you know, I mean, you're almost to a thousand, right? Um, yep, Aaron, almost you're almost there. road to a thousand. Hashtag road to a thousand. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, watch, right. I um, watch myself, you know, because I, I watch back like my old stuff from like 2011. I'm like, wow, I was so bad back then. Oh, my oh, God. That I first was, video of yours, you were so shy. Dude, you know, it, it's so funny. I found myself going on the, the channel and watching the state of no DQ, what happened to Jeff Meacham video. <laughs> it's a completely different. I couldn't even get through it. I could, I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was like, wow, is this the same Aaron I know now? Like, Oh my God, yeah. what did I do to you when I left the channel? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but an answer to his question, besides you guys, Oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I was just going to say, I do listen to um, Jim Cornette. Uh, he's got one and he's vocal yes. about everything. Like, I mean, basically it's just him talking about stories, you know? Yeah. Um, I like Eric Bischoff, um, the hometown yes. guy. Um, you Bischoff can unblock him from, from yeah. Twitter now, uh, I mean, Eric. The, yeah. the election's over. Yeah, David, you know, I do check out, you know, when there is something newsworthy, I'll check out, you know, somebody's right. podcast or whatever, whether it's Russo or Cornette or Ryback. And I like Jim Ross too. Yeah when, yeah, when there's something noteworthy that I need to check out, I'll check it out. But for the most part, you know, yeah. I, I don't really spend a lot of time listening or watching podcasts or YouTube videos. Yeah, and he, he, to answer your question, Aaron, we are a podcast essentially. We are a channel of podcasts because our yeah. good buddy Sean Waltman has a show called X Pac One Two Three Sixty that is a iTunes podcast as well as a YouTube show. Yeah. So it's it, 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 this is just a video podcast. It's the same. Well, Howard Stern it, started that. When you think about it, Howard Stern exactly. started the recording of the radio show. So that's sort of you know, I'm just miss, missing that Larry doing. King mic now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people ask like, why don't I do like the audio? Like we've been doing the video for over a decade now. I mean this this is my realm. You know this is what we enjoy doing. Yeah. We st we, we started with a little. Okay. Here here here's a here's a trade story for all you people that don't believe what we're talking about here. When we did Extreme Mayhem with Mike, Aaron, and I, we literally, I would take the bus to Aaron and Mike's neighborhood because they live in the same neighborhood. Aaron and I would walk to Mike's or Mike would walk to Aaron's. We would tape a freaking microphone <laughs> to a telephone, okay? And we would call Dusty Rhodes or Randy or whoever. And we would tape the show that way with a recorder next to the damn telephone. Yeah, oh, that, wow. that, was, that was very... Uh... That we, we, we were very creative with trying to come up with a way to, to efficiently We had to be because there was no technology like that back then in 2002. There wasn't anything like that back then. Well, we didn't have the money. That's true. Well, that too. That's true. We didn't have the budget to do it. I mean, then we started doing the videos in 2004 with XMV, and we, we've been doing videos ever since. So, you know, that, that's been yep. our realm. Yeah, it is. It's your niche market. Can you believe that June of this year, Aaron, marks 10 years for this show? I know that's crazy. The ten year anniversary, so wow. we're almost the ten year anniversary of Benoit. That that is really crazy. Yeah, because it, 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 it was it was it was within a few days. Because my first story was the whole Benoit about Nancy Benoit. Grace yeah, Nancy yeah. Grace. Oh right. You called her an effing idiot. That was your first. Who's just such a peach, isn't she? She's just what, a wonderful. What person. a way to kick off. Oh, I off hate Nancy wrestling. Grace. Yeah. What's that? What's that, what's that, Aaron? No, I said what a way to kick off talk wrestling to rip on Nancy Grace. Hey, you know what? There was no, there was no easier target in wrestling back then. There just wasn't. She was. Everybody hated her, and they still do. Yeah. So condescending she, still, she is. She's 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 a very unsettling person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, I saw something. I did see some sort of podcast or a radio interview or something where these these wrestling guys actually sabotaged her and started talking about. The, the stuff in 2007. Yeah. She actually walked out on the interview. It was, it was very awesome. Yeah, she walked out on her own show. It was freaking brilliant. It was awesome. Wow. 
Yeah. God bless those guys. I don't remember who it was, but God bless them. It was great because she she completely gave me it was cannon fodder, man. It was Dave. Go back and watch the Ford show. I swear to God. Okay, awesome. I will. <laughs> and, and, and and you know what? I actually had hair. It was beautiful hair. Yeah, you did. Oh really? Huh. I had great hair back then, man. There's R. a R.I.P. R.I.P. Leave the memories. R.I.P. Alone. Jeff's hair. Yeah, there's there's a picture on my Facebook from a few months before that at Disneyland because I want Disneyland of me and Mickey Mouse. I almost have a mullet, no lie. Oh, Jeff, your birthday's coming up. Oh, yes, it is March. So you 1st, know what right? I got to do. You know what I got to do every single year. I post that video from 2005 when Mike shoved the cake in your face. You had a lot yep. of hair in that video. <laughs> Everyone, like all the comments, are like, "What happened to Jeff's hair?" You know what? So did Mike though, because because when I I posted um. I posted the group pic of us on uh, Twitter from uh, one of the sleepovers at Josh's. And Mike's comment was, my beautiful hair. Yeah. Hey, we're all losing. <laughs> well, Except for David. David's still got his hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad like, I can carry mine. the hair here and no DQ, I guess, right? Yeah, I can thank to, my brother. grandfather, Rosario Trupiano, my mother's father, because I believe that's where hereditary where it comes from is your mother's father. Yeah, so. So, well, you guys, well, stop dogging well, on, on uh, David's hair. He's, got, he's the only one of us that, that has that kind of head of hair. <laughs> Well, as we all know, if it wasn't for Zack Ryder and The Miz, Aaron still had his head of hair, so, you know. Yeah, I mean, Zack Ryder definitely contributed to me losing my hair. Because I heard, like, the more you shave your head, the, the harder it is to grow back. It's very true, because I shaved mine quite a bit. Yeah, I think, I think so. What's funny is, the head doesn't grow back a lot. The beard comes in thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. We all got a beard going on. Well, as of, that, I try to be a tough guy, but I just couldn't grow, grow my, my damn, damn beard, beard in. in. <laughs> so, well, as of let's see, I get I get paid at eleven o'clock by about one o'clock today. It's gonna be totally clean shaven. Next week's show will be a totally bald again. Nice, good stuff. All right, let's wrap this up because we've been going for a while, over forty minutes. I love it. Woo! Once a month we we'll have to do this. Once a month, just get a whole bunch of questions together, get you guys back on talk wrestling. Cause I lo- I love interacting with you guys more. I just t- be being a talking head in my own phone. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. I enjoy it. All right, so all we'll right, wrap so, this up. Right. Oh, you wrap, this, you up. wrap da- this up. This is your show, right, My damn show. Let me wrap up the show. David, plug, sir. Uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, uh, Smart Mark 420 We got a wrestling show in Bay City, Michigan, February 25th. Jerry the King Lawler will be there. So check out their uh, Twitter at uh, UCW Slammer. And, uh, yeah, I'll update you more on that as uh, we go on. Jerry Lawler and who else? Uh, the Brooklyn Brawler, Steve Lombardi, will be there. Steve Lombardi, right. there you go. <clears throat> Aaron, plugs du jour. ProWrestlingTees.com. Search No DQ. Pick up the Talk Wrestling T-shirt, the fabulous Talk Wrestling T-shirt in all of its Aaron, glory. Quick, quick question. If they buy this shirt now in L.A., can they, can they have it by the time Raw comes out here? Raw's in less than two weeks. I don't think so. The, the shipping is like, it. it's like four weeks. It, it does take a while for the shipping, but uh, definitely okay, well, worth oh, picking up the shirt. Uh, well, wherever you are, buy it where it's Raw. It's back down. Yep. And of course, NoDQ.com for all the latest regarding Elimination Chamber. And you can find Aaron on Twitter at NoDQDOTCOM. And of course, if you want to follow his personal Twitter, it's Aaron Riff, one word. And uh, you can find me at underscore Jeff Meacham on Twitter and Instagram. And for the panel, this is the Meach saying, see you next week. <laughs>